New York City, the largest and most populous metropolis in the United States of America. Considered the most international city in the U.S., the place is a melting pot of races, religion, culture, fashion, food, and lifestyle. It is also in New York where one can find the United Nations headquarters, a venue where all the 192 member states of the United Nations, including the Philippines, converge annually every September for the General Assembly session. Today, our social contract is no longer confined to our nation state. We should therefore exert efforts to connect, to emphasize commonalities and not differences, to think that we are less Filipinos, Americans, Chinese, French, Russians, and to think that we are more of ourselves as global citizens, the people of the United Nations. Yes, it is true that we need not always act with a united front, or we don't always have to act as a community. But neither can we ignore the fact that there are many problems which can only be solved by a united global community. Whether it is issues on protecting the environment, extreme weather conditions, poverty and inequality, rule of law, countering terrorism and violent extremism, these are just a few of the problems or challenges that we can only solve together. Together, we can find pragmatic idealism that will give us hope and momentum to do more. For the second consecutive year, Department of Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano participated in the United Nations General Assembly high-level general debate. Representing the government of the Philippines, Secretary Cayetano addressed the 73rd session of the UN General Assembly that adopted the theme, Making the United Nations Relevant to All People, Global Leadership and Shared Responsibilities for Peaceful, Equitable and Sustainable Societies. Making the United Nations relevant to all is difficult. It is a dream, yet it is a dream worth fighting for. The Filipino people will remain to be persistent in our quest for peace, order, development, and prosperity, and the quest for a safe and comfortable life for all those living in the Philippines. We will continue to have faith, but put actions to our faith, and we will continue to love our nation. I was wondering myself, you know, some of these titles that they use for, for the names, of, for the themes of, of, of UN Assembly uh, meetings and big summits, sometimes they seem like they don't mean anything. But we're very fortunate today because uh, the first one to speak was someone who appears to be at odds with the United Nations, uh, US President Trump, and he just explained it perfectly, that he's looking to a world where uh, as I, well, as I was saying, I know you'll notice that when he ends his speech, he says, not God bless America, but God bless the nations of the world. That's really something. Because he's often seen as a critic of the United Nations. But here he is, God bless the nations of the world. After, he weaves like a, like you know, a Joseph's multicolored coat, a you know, multicolored tapestry of individual nations, each one distinct, but all of them free, independent, prosperous, and with governments who are so responsible, they are able to take care of their people back home. Apart from delivering the Philippine statement, Secretary Cayetano attended the Road to Marrakesh, a high-level side event that took place during the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. The event provided an opportunity for the governments to highlight initiatives already in place, as well as the types of actions partnerships, and innovative ideas they foresee in the coming years as means of implementing the Global Compact for a safe, orderly, and regular migration. The permanent mission of the Philippines to the United Nations in New York served as one of the co-sponsors of the high-level side event. Allow us Filipinos to take this opportunity to thank all nations and all peoples to you who are seated in front. Um, who made this great endeavor a reality, who committed, who 
contributed much for this to become a reality. Truly, 10 million Filipinos abroad uh, will not only benefit uh, by this global compact, but it is a dream come true for Filipinos to now experience the love of their neighbor. Days before delivering the Philippine statement, the Foreign Affairs Secretary held several bilateral meetings with his fellow foreign ministers from the member states of the United Nations and other UN officials. The independent foreign policy of the Philippines, not just of President Duterte, no, dictates that we be friends to all and enemies to none. And it is but natural because in a global village, everyone needs each other's help. Secondly, with 10.5 million Filipinos abroad, it helps us. While in New York, Secretary Cayetano hosted a reception for notable Filipinos. Dr. Susan Mercado, Dr. Mercado was appointed by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte as Special Envoy for Global Health Initiatives in April 2018 and is included in the official list of four nominees for World Health Organization Western Pacific Regional Director. The other nominees are from Japan, Malaysia, and New Zealand. Dr. Susan Mercado has occupied several positions in the World Health Organization for more than 50 years and also served in the Department of Health. My government believes that the Philippines could contribute more to advancing the, world, the work of the World Health Organization if it, if it entrusts one of the best and brightest Philippine health experts to lead its Western Pacific Regional Office. We therefore seek your, your valuable support for the candidature of Dr. Susan Mercado for the position of a Regional Director of the WHO Western Pacific for the term 2019-2024 at elections to be held next month in Manila to represent the Philippines in the Asia-Pacific. The Philippines has had the distinct honor of being home to the Western Pacific region of WHO. But through all these years, we have never had a woman regional director. And perhaps it is time for us to elect a woman. Apart from the fact that women and children face a disproportionate part of health challenges. The Sustainable Development Goals for the participation, engagement, and leadership of women in achieving our vision for 2030. So this year, we are proud to nominate a Filipina to be the first woman WHO Regional Director in the region. We are all here humbly asking you to vote for the Philippines. We are asking you to vote for the Philippines. We are offering you change. We are offering you our commitment, our impassioned support, and our sincere desire to work with you side by side for a better region. We are not going to be in front of you. We are not going to be behind you but we are going to lead WHO beside you. The Philippines is one of the first countries to sign the United Nations Declaration that formed the basis of the UN Charter. It officially became a member state on October 24, 1945. Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano's participation in the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly underscore the importance that the Philippines places in the prestigious organization and its continuing commitment and support in many years to come. Because again, I have to keep going back to that, is the fact that we are uh, charter members and we are very active here, uh, perhaps not in a controversial way because we contribute. We don't detract from the mission of the United Nations. We help it achieve its aims. So very quietly we do all that work and uh, they have to hear from the Philippines because our, our contributions are always positive. <laughs>